This video is to help you with experiments Q3 and Q4, which is the chemical equilibrium of acid dissociation of a two-color indicator. For one experiment, you'll be using bromocresol green. For the other one, you'll be using methyl red. Other than that, the experiment is pretty close to identical. You'll be making up solutions of these at different pHs, and you will be investigating them at uh, various wavelengths using a spectronic 20. Now, previously, you have been investigating colored solutions where only one species has been present that is colored. So it's really quite easy to apply Beer's law. In this case, you're going to have two different colored solutions species, rather, in the same solution. Let's go to the board and talk a bit about that. Previously, you have been investigating colored species by spectrophotometry uh, when there's only been one colored species present. If, say, that is the spectrum of this species, you'd probably choose somewhere around 500 because that is the maximum absorbance and therefore the a small change in concentration will give a large change in absorbance. However, things become a little more complicated when you've got two colored species present in the same container. Let's say this is the spectrum of the blue variety of bromocresol green. The acid form of it is yellow. It's a different concentration. And so you might get a spectrum that looks like that. They're not the same. What you will need to do is choose two different wavelengths. Uh, you can't measure it just at one, but if you measure at two different wavelengths, you can manipulate the equations and run Beer's law two separate times and determine the concentrations. In this case, rather than going for lambda max, you want the wavelength where the two are most different. Now, in this case, probably this colored species, you would run it there. Where you've got most change is probably about here, which is about, what, 630. So I would read the solutions at lambda equals 500 and at lambda equals 625. When you read the same solutions at those two different wavelengths, you will be able to calculate the concentration of each of the two colored species, even though they're both absorbing light at that particular frequency. And the way you do that is to measure just this species, the blue colored species, at the wavelength. And you can work out the Beer's law constants at that point. And you measure just the other species at both wavelengths. And then you end up with two equations in two unknowns. So much for the theory. Let's go and look at the practicalities at the apparatus. You will be making up five solutions of each of the, of whichever indicator is yours. Let's say you're doing bromocresol green. You will make them up at five different pHs. You'll get a blue solution, a yellow solution, and three different shades of green. For methyl red, you'll get a yellow solution, a pink solution, and three different shades of orange. You will need to run a spectrum of the blue and the yellow, or in this case, of the yellow and the pink, as we showed on the board. You've done this sort of thing before in Chem 240, so we're going to put in here the video that goes with how to run a spectrum on a Spectronic 20. This is a Spectronic 20 instrument. 
Um, there is a sample compartment right here. There are controls on the front and a filter control here. This is where you set the wavelength. The rest of the controls are up here and the output is right here up top. Now, first of all, the compartment, sample compartment has a lid and uh, you'll be placing your sample in there. The left knob is how you turn it on. We've actually got this one plugged in, but it's a click turn on and off once it has been plugged in. And the right knob is used for setting 100% transmittance, same thing as zero absorbance. You set the wavelength here. Now, there is a filter here which changes. This one runs from 340 to 599 nanometers and then from 600 to 950. So if you change the wavelength across that boundary, you need to make sure that you've got the right setting for the filter. We have some blue calibration solutions of different uh, concentrations and here we have some solution in a sample cell or cuvette. As you look at the cuvette, there are uh, things that distinguish it from a test tube. It's got a white uh, disc on it. You can actually write a sample number. It's also got a white line and we'll use that for alignment. We're going to be running a spectrum so that we know what the best wavelength to use is. And the best thing to use that is a medium concentration, not too dark, not too light, baby bear's porridge, and a second cuvette which has got a blank in it. And water will do for this part. <coughs> First thing you should do is plug in your spec 20, let it sit for about five minutes if the lamp is cold. Um, if you're just getting it from somebody else, the lamp will be warm, but the longer it sits, the happier it's going to be. Set the first wavelength and we've got, f we'll go from 400. We adjust that using this top knob here, 400 nanometers. And the first thing we do is turn this, the, adjust the mode switch to transmittance. And we need to adjust this to zero. There, when there is no sample in the compartment, there is a shutter in the light path. And so there's no light getting through. We've got the mode selector here, pushed until it's on percent transmittance, no light equals zero transmittance. So we adjust this knob until we get zero as a reading. There we go. Sometimes you'll overshoot, but that's okay. Bingo. The flashing negative sign means we're quite close. All right, now we take we, a blank solution <coughs> and we put it in. Now, here you need to be careful. Notice we do have a line here and there's a line on the front here and you need to align them so that you are sure that the, that the cell, the cuvette, is always in the same position. If it's not completely round, you might be introducing some errors. But if you always have the white line directly at the front, you will be in the same alignment. Once that is done, you, if you listen, you can hear the shutter going up and down. Close the lid so there isn't any spare light. And at this point, we've got 100% of the light going through. So we use the right-hand knob, which is actually labeled 100%, and adjust this so that we get 100% transmittance. There we go. We're almost there. Oops, gone a bit far. Got it. Right, and now we read the sample. We're not interested in percent transmittance. Push the mode switch until the light comes up next to absorbance and put my colored sample in. At this point, when it settles down at 400 nanometers or 399, it's drifted a bit, 0.218 absorbance. This is the number to write down. Then we take the sample out, put the blank back in, and we're going to readjust the wavelength. We're going to move up to 410 nanometers. If you do this in about 10 nanometer steps, <coughs> you'll get a decent line. Now notice that with the blank, pushing this back to percent transmittance, it has shifted. The, the 
detector cell is not equally responsive at all wavelengths. So you have to reset 100% transmittance or zero absorbance every time you change the wavelength. So let's adjust this down because it's only 100% transmittance. I'm not sure what 115% would mean. Come on. Back up. There we go. And again, making sure we align the sample solution and the absorbance is 0.177 at 410 nanometers. That's a significantly na different number. You would record this. You would record all the way through your range that you're directed to measure. And then you would draw a spectrum such as we showed. Then you would choose lambda max and do your investigation. Once you have chosen lambda max, and I think we will actually leave it at 410, you're now ready to construct a calibration curve and read your known and your unknown solutions. Now, this part of the experiment is quite quick. It's a good idea to have all of your solutions ready to go, and then you can read them in rapid succession, bang, bang, bang. Now, for this part of the species, we decided lambda max is 410 nanometers. So set your, na your monochromator to that, and <clears throat> again, check that you've got the right filter setting. We're between 340 and 599, so that is correct. And from this point on, you need to use just one cuvette to minimize any kind of differences between different vessels minimize the inconsistency. First thing to do is take a cuvette with a blank in it, pop it in, and set. You can either set zero absorbance, they both work, or you can turn to percent transmittance and set it as 100%. Okay, we've now got zero absorbance. At this point, dump the water and take the first solution we have, and rinse the tube. You've got lots of solution usually. And then fill it. As long as you're up to the bottom of the disc, you'll be all right. Put the lid back on and read. And so my first sample, which is 1 times 10 to the minus fifth molar, has an absorbance of 0.009. Moving along, we dump that and take the next solution. And again, rinse it with the actual measurement solution. You've got quite a lot of it. And pop it in, align it, and read again. And 2 times 10 to the minus fifth molar is a reading of 0 0.030. So these solutions will all increase. We can keep on reading for all of these <coughs> darker colored solutions and then draw the uh, calibration curve. Now, once you've read all of your solutions, remove the cuvette, wa dump it off, wash it all out, turn the Spectronic 20 off, unplug it, and return it last pieces of information. When there is nothing in the sample compartment and there's a shutter across there, if you're in absorbance mode, it flashes 1999. That's as close as it can get to two, and the flashing means I'm not seeing any light. Now, that's all that that number means. If you turn the percent transmittance, you get a stable number. The other thing to point out is we have printed instructions. When all else fails, read the instructions. If you can't remember what I've said, this will always be available to you. Once you have got those spectra, you will choose the wavelengths that you will be investigating all five solutions at. And you take your spec 20, set the wavelength to wavelength one, and read all five solutions at the first wavelength. Then the second wavelength, reset the machine to the second wavelength, and read all five solutions at that wavelength as well. That will help you with the concentrations of color number one and color number two. The only thing that's missing from the equilibrium constant uh, expression at this point is pH, because 
this is an acid dissociation, so the concentration of H plus is very much in the uh, mix. To measure that, you're going to need to use a pH meter, and that's what's behind me here. This is a pH meter, and this is how you use it. At the moment, it's set on standby, which means it's shorted out, and the electrode has been sitting in distilled water um, overnight or since the last time it was used. Now, the trick is don't lift the electrode out of a liquid unless it's on standby. That's, you can polarize the electrode and it will give you very peculiar results if you do that. We are going to calibrate the machine using buffer solutions which are available in these vials. They live next to a pH meter. They're labeled and they're also color coded. So we'll lift this up and using a chem wipe, blot it dry. And when I say blot, that's what I mean. Don't rub it dry. Again, you'll develop a static electric charge and that's a fabulous way to get lousy results. So we then lower the electrode into this one, which is the pH four buffer, it's pink. And we turn this to pH over this way and then use the standardized knob to make sure that the machine reads 4.01. There we are, that's now set at 4.01. And the second thing I do, whoops, get back up there. Thank you is put that on standby, and we do the second portion of the calibration. It's on standby, lift it up out of the buffer solution, put the cap back on, and rinse the electrode, blot it again, and we're now going to put it into pH 10 Now, at this point, we put it onto pH, and instead of using standardized, we're going to use the slope to adjust this until it gets to 10.01. And so we adjust this until we're getting to 10.01. There we go. Put it on standby, and again, lift up wash the electrodes off, and we're now ready to take pH measurements using this machine. If you forget, there is the instruction of how to standardize a pH meter is always going to be nearby to the pH meter, so you won't tra travel very far. When you want to read, just put your solution under the electrode, turn it onto pH, and it'll tell you what the pH is. At the end of the day, please leave this on standby, make sure that it is washed off and in a beaker of fresh distilled water for the next person to come along. The waste disposal for this is down the sink with lots of running water. And that should be enough for you to be able to perform experiments either Q3 or Q4.